Welcome back to Chess Dog. I am John, and uh, today we have a game in the Jobava London system. And if you want to win with the Jobava London, you should definitely model this game by Super Grandmaster Alexander Grishuk. And now he is playing uh, Kuznutinov, and uh, Kuznutinov is rated around 2450. Uh, Grishuk, as you well know, is a Super Grandmaster rated, rated around 2750. And in our last game in the Jobava London, we saw what happens when black lets white play their plan the way they want to play their plan. In this game, Grishuk's opponent does everything he can to make Grishuk's job hard. But what ends up happening is he keeps digging a bigger and bigger hole for himself. And Grishuk shows us what to do when black makes unexpected moves in the Jobaba London system. Let's begin. D4, knight f6, bishop f4, g6, knight to c3. The Jobaba London combines bishop f4 and knight to c3. D5, e3, bishop g7. And as we've discussed, the good aggressive move for white here is h4, hoping to play h5 and open, opening up the h file. Black plays h6, which is a, a good move. The idea is if white plays h5, black can respond with g5. Black wants to lock up the king side. He doesn't want any files to be opened up. So by playing h6, he's prepared to lock up the king side if white ever plays h5. We should play his knight to f3. Now, one of the things with h4 is that it weakens the g4 square a little bit. So black puts his bishop on g4. And Grishuk responds, bishop e2. Another idea, another good idea for white, is to play the queen to d2. And white doesn't have to worry about black capturing on f3 and messing up, in quotes, his pawn structure, because his pawn structure is actually quite strong here. The pawn on f3 controls the e4 and g4 squares. He has a half-open g file that he can attack down, and white has the two bishops here. So queen to d2 is another line that white can play. But Grishuk plays bishop to e2. Kuznutinov plays c6, a very solid move designed to create a strong and sturdy central structure. Grishuk plays knight to e5, a very thematic move in these types of positions. Bishop takes e2, queen takes e2. Now, white is only one move away from completing his development, castling. And white would ca always castle long here, or usually castle long, because he wants to attack on the king side using his pawns. And he doesn't want to castle in front of those pawns that are going to be advanced. So white's main strategy here is to play f3 and then e4. Sometimes white can play g4 also, but f3 and e4 advancing in the center of the board. Black plays knight b to d7, getting his last minor piece developed. White castles long, queen to a5, put some pressure on that a2 pawn. That pawn is currently defended by the knight at c3, but if the knight can be distracted, uh, a2 can fall, so white plays king to b1. A very standard move. Usually when you castle queen side, you play king to b1. Black plays knight e5, and white plays bishop takes e5. And from this position, it will be very hard for black to stop white's central play of f3 and e4. It's going to be very, very hard to stop these two, these two moves. Black plays h5. And this will be the perfect moment for white to play f3 and e4. But this is a very important glimpse into the mind of a super grand master. What a super grand master asks themselves is this. They'll say, what is my basic plan? In this case, f3, e4. And then they'll say, is there any way I can do it faster? Can I play my plan even faster than I intended to? And Grishuk realizes that he can. So instead of playing f3 and e4, he just plays e4 immediately. He doesn't prepare it with f3. He jumps right in. Now, usually in this line, white wants to attack on the king's side. So his opponent castles long. What he should have done is take on e4 and after knight e4 and castles kingside. White is slightly better, but only slightly better. 
but he castled the other way. So Grishuk takes on d5, black takes on d5. But look at black's king. It's actually less safe on the queen side than it would have been on the king side. Look at these key squares that the bishop at e5 controls. Black's king doesn't have a lot of mobility. So Grishuk asks himself this question. How can I activ activate my worst place piece, which is this rook on h1? And he plays rook to h3. Now the rook can shift over to the queen side to attack black's king. Rook to d7. Knight to b5. What Grishuk is threatening is for the rook at h3 to go all the way to a3, then when the queen moves, capture on a7. And the threat of checking at a8 on the back rank is so devastating, black would have to give up his queen for the rook. There's no way he can let that happen. So black plays a6. Now the a7 pawn would not be vulnerable after rook to a3. And of course, he's also hitting the knight at b5. Grishuk plays rook to c3 check. The king is forced to d8. There's no other thing. He can play the rook to c7, but then he would just lose it. So the king goes to d8. Now, how to set up a mate in one threat? Grishuk plays knight to a7. And rook to c8 check mate is the threat on the board. Castle and queenside looks like it wasn't a very good idea after all. Black plays e6 to give himself room so he can move that king to e7. Grishuk plays queen to f3. Um, some computer ideas, and these are pretty diabolical, is rook to c5 first. <clears throat> the idea is to get the queen off of a5 so that white can eventually get the queen to a3. Really advanced stuff. If queen to b6, queen to f3, queen takes a7. Bishop takes, bishop takes, queen f6, check, and after rook d7, queen takes, rook would be curtains. And if black instead in this position were to play king to e7, then the idea is seeing queen to a3 with the threat of a discovered attack. The rook would move, and black's king would be in check. Rook to d6, knight to c8, check, takes, takes, knight e8, and then just rook takes e8, king takes e8. Bishop takes d6, and white would be up a rook, and that would be the end of it. Those are some computer ideas. Uh, Grishuk plays queen to f3, threatening to take the knight and win the knight on f6. His opponent plays king to e7. A slightly better move, although still losing, would have been knight to e4, but then rook to c8 check, king e7, rook takes, bishop takes, bishop takes. Now, black can interpose, because he played knight e4, he can play this knight to d2 move, check, which forks the king and the queen, so white would have to give up the exchange. Well, then after c3, believe it or not, white is completely winning. White's king is actually safe here. It's very hard for black to get at it, yet black's king is extremely vulnerable. He has all these weak dark squares all around his king. He'd be in big trouble. King e8, knight c8. Rook d8, knight b6, knight a4, and you can see all of those weak dark squares surrounding black's king, and white would penetrate on those and win fairly easily. Kuznetinov plays king to e7, knight to c8 check. He decides to go ahead and give up the exchange. If he extend, instead tries to extend it, plays king e8, then white would just take on f6 instead and win that way. He plays rook takes c8, rook takes c8, Rook to d7, and here comes the final move of the game, and it's a, a double attack. Do you see it? That's right. Bishop to c7 attacks the rook at d8 and the queen at a5. So Grishuk shows us what to do when our opponents sort of don't cooperate and let us do what we want. There are always other options and other ways to take advantage of our opponent's move. And if you want to see a really good Jobava London game as played by the world champion, be sure to click the link above. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.